Hi Founder fans, Jason here. Welcome to Founder of the Day Trivia. It is Thursday. We are on the 3rd of February. Happy Groundhog's Day. I hope that went swimmingly for you. Uh, we missed last week. I apologize with my spouse out of town. I was a little bit more busy with the kids than I anticipated. I've also been a little bit under the weather this week. Like a real little bit under the weather. And after two years of not being sick at all, luckily, uh, I was able to avoid all of the plague. Uh, just a little bit of the sniffles has really done a lot to my self-esteem. Uh, hi, Troy. Thank you so much for coming. It is Trivia Thursday, and we are excited for a good grand old time. It's going to be a blast. Now, it always takes people a second to roll in, so we are going to pop up the study hall real quick. And as people roll in, I am going to uh, put a new... Uh, amount of time on the clock and I'm gonna do five founders in five minutes pay attention because some of this will be in on the test as they say uh, now we are looking at countdown trivia let's make it five minutes and go okay already up on the screen you will see uh, J uh, Joseph Whipple so I like to talk a lot here about uh, William Whipple and I need a haircut very desperately unfortunately uh that was unable to be taken care of anyway five founders in five minutes uh we have joseph whipple was brothers of william whipple a signer of the declaration of independence as for joseph he ends up working uh, very he becomes very wealthy in portsmouth new hampshire goes on to become a customs collector under the new government under george washington uh, it's at this time that one of George Washington's slaves, Ona Judge, runs away while Washington is president in Philadelphia. She is helped by the free community of Philadelphia because Pennsylvania had already outlawed slavery more than a decade before the federal government shows up. Uh, and she runs to uh, New Hampshire and in Portsmouth. Joseph Whipple is one of the people he's actually told by uh, his boss, Oliver Wolcott Jr., who was Secretary of the Treasury at the time, he replaced Alexander Hamilton, uh, told his subordinate Whipple to go find President Washington's uh, slave. And Whipple said, no, no thank you. In fact, he did own one slave in his lifetime that I'm aware of, uh, and like his brother, did liberate his slave and gave him 50 acres of property for his uh, work that he had done earlier in life. Moving right along. Uh, John Lowell. So John Lowell is the patriarch of the Lowell family. If you know of Lowell, Massachusetts, that is where uh, one of the earliest factories was built in the United States, and his one of his sons builds it. Uh, many of his children uh, are important in a wide variety of things, and his descendants go on to do a whole bunch of things, uh, become teachers and, and, and poets. There's a bunch of poets, actually, in his descendants. Uh, as for Lowell, he was running... Uh, he was in moves to Roxbury, which is just outside Boston, just before the American Revolution gets started. He gets a lot of crap from some of his neighbors because he signed a document saying that he supported the uh, British government. Uh, he immediately regrets that, joins the militia for a while, serves in the militia, ends up going to... Uh, gets elected to the state assembly, helps to write the first constitution. He actually puts in the line, quote, all men are born free and equal. That is in the state, the state constitution that later goes on to be used to prove that they had already outlawed slavery in Massachusetts. And so technically he's the one who puts the line outlawing slavery into the Massachusetts state constitution. Uh, he would then go join the Continental Congress, and he's chosen as one of the three members of the Court of... to sit on the Court of Appeals in Cases of Capture, which is really the first federal court uh, that decided when a ship was captured who got the spoils of that war. Uh, John Brown. Lots of John Browns in the American Revolution, uh, in the Civil War, uh, throughout American history, lots of John Browns. This John Brown was a young man studying at Princeton, and then the British came and everyone in the college ran away. Uh, he transfers to the College of William and Mary, and then the British come, and everyone in the college runs away. So he ran away from two colleges because the British came. Uh, he, joined, he ends up studying law directly under Thomas Jefferson, pretty good teacher, uh, ends up continuing in this position for several years uh, until he is elected to the Virginia House of Representatives, eventually is chosen as an inaugural member of the United States House of Representatives, where he speaks on behalf of the people of Kentucky. He's the one who brings to the floor uh, the proposition to make Kentucky a state. Kentucky is chosen as a state, and John Brown resigns his position as an inaugural member of the House representing Virginia, 
to become the initial, the first United States Senator from Kentucky. Joseph Trumbull, a uh, son of John Trumbull, who was governor of Connecticut, the only governor who was a colonial governor who stayed on and became a state governor after the revolution. Uh, Joseph early on joins the militia and goes with the Connecticut militia to uh, as a commissary, and he helps feed and clothe the soldiers from Connecticut. George Washington shows up, starts the Continental Army, really likes what Joseph Trumbull had done, and brings him on as the first uh, uh, commissary general of provisions for the Continental Army. He does this for about a year and a half. It's a thankless job. He ends up leaving pretty quick, uh, and then joins the Board of War, which he ends up He's ill his whole life. He passed away just 41 after six months of the Board of War, so he dies pretty quickly. And then John Parker Boyd. Don't ask me why I use this awful purple color. I did, and we're going to have to live with that. John Parker Boyd goes on to... Uh, he joins the... He wants to be a soldier. Joins the Massachusetts militia just after the revolution ends. Helps suppress Shays' Rebellion. Ended up going to India. Works as a mercenary in India. Suppressing the indigenous people there on behalf of the British. Comes back to the United States. Uh, becomes a brigadier general in the United States Army. Goes with uh, 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 Harrison. The future president Harrison. Uh, uh, name is Robert. Not Robert Hanson Harrison. Uh... Oh, man, and I'm out of time. Uh, governor of the Territory Harrison ends up being at the fight at Tippy Canoe. Harrison, whose first name I can't think of right now, uh, later runs for president under the guys Tippy Canoe and Tyler Two. Parker Boyd is there. He ends up continuing on during the War of 1812, becoming really important to the victory for the Americans. So... With that out of the way, we got a bunch of stuff done. Benjamin Harrison is incorrect, Troy. Uh, Benjamin Harrison signed the Declaration of Independence and was a governor. His uh, was governor of Virginia. His son was William Henry Harrison. There it is. Uh, a very young man. Actually, William Henry Harrison, and I know we're done with this. We're going over to trivia now. William Henry Harrison was, unfortunately... Uh, going to school to be a physician when his father passed away in Philadelphia. He ends up taking some help from his father's friends and joins uh, at a very young age. He's in his 20s, and John Adams appoints him as the first governor of the Indiana Territory about the time that Ohio was split off to a separate territory because Ohio is about to become a state. Uh, and then William Henry Harrison it, like basically creates the Northwest. William Henry Harrison is one of the most underrated people He's known for being old and die, being the quickest death of a president. That's what he's famous for. He d gave a speech, died pretty quickly. Though it's a misconception that he died because he gave a long speech out in the cold. Uh, truthfully, the way the latrines were set up, the water for 100 years going to the White House uh, was brown water. Um, so he probably died of dysentery from drinking the water at the White House, uh, is my understanding. So, with that out of the way, uh, hi, Alex, welcome, welcome, let's play, what's up? We're going over to trivia, we just did our five pounders in five minutes, time for trivia, don't look at that. Uh, I always forget to take question ten off when I'm done writing them and put question number one up. So, with that out of the way, we are going to switch our timer over to timer games. We are going to cut that down to one minute, and I'm going to ask us the first question of the day. Who was Ona Judge, and what is she known for? Anyone jumping in? This is question number one. You're here just in time. You can see on the opposite side uh, the answers you guys are giving. Who was Ona Judge, and what was she known for? I mentioned her when we were discussing briefly at the beginning. Uh, William Whipple, any, any, or Joseph Whipple, anyone popping in? We just did our five founders in five minutes. A quick little study hall I do before we get into trivia to give you time to get here. Uh, let's see. We got some answers coming in regarding who Ona Judge was and what is she known for. Uh, Troy, with an answer, uh, wait and see if Alex, anyone else, I'm about six seconds ahead of you, team, today, so, uh, there's, uh, there's only so much I can do. You really only have 54 seconds to answer before I move on. Uh, with that coming in, I'm gonna just kind of stall here for these last few seconds. It was when we were talking about Joseph Whipple earlier we discussed, uh, that, uh, he was asked to locate her. Uh, by his superior. And I'm going to say Troy is absolutely right. She was a runaway slave of George Washington. She escaped New Hampshire and the people of New Hampshire refused to help President Washington locate her because New Hampshire, though they never actually outlawed slavery, was very active in getting rid of it early on. Let's do continue. Question number the second. What did John Lowell contribute to the Massachusetts State Constitution? 
He was a member of the body that did create the uh, 1780 Massachusetts State Constitution. Massachusetts created a 1778 Constitution that was a little too democratic, and it did not pass. In fact, uh, Parsons, uh, the first name was Parson Weems. No, maybe? I think the name is Parson Weems. The gentleman who started the Essex Junto, and I forgot to start the timer like an idiot, so we'll just go to 30 seconds. Uh, the uh, Essex Junto in Massachusetts later was the heart of the Federalist Party in New England, but 20 years earlier was started to prevent the first Massachusetts state constitution from being ratified because it was simply passed too quickly. Now, once it was, the referendum did not pass that first constitution, they wrote a second one. John Law was there. John Law is more famous for his sons who started the... Um, John Law was more famous for his sons who started many factories, including Lowell, Massachusetts, which had the, the woman's factory there, uh, was really important. Uh, we see Troy coming in with some answers. I did say I forgot to do the timer, so I will pop it up. Uh, and Troy is absolutely right. All men are born free and equal. This is the phrase he, he suggested to be put into the Massachusetts State Constitution. Uh, three years later, when Theodore Sedgwick and the guy from Massachusetts, man, names are escaping me today, uh, when they brought to the courts that, hey, it says all men are free and equal uh, on behalf of Elizabeth Freeman, a.k.a. Mumbet, and several other slaves in a freedom suit. Uh, this is the line they pointed to. They said, it says everyone's born free and equal, so we can't have slavery. And it ended up going to the Supreme Court, where Chief Justice William Cushing uh, said, yeah, absolutely, there is no more slavery in the state. There hasn't been slavery for several years. Thank you, John Lowell, for suggesting we put this in the Constitution moving right along and i'm going to do the timer this time i'm going to remember why did john brown of virginia resign his seat in the united states house of representatives as i mentioned a little bit before there were many john browns throughout american history it's a fairly common name i apologize to any john brown who might be watching right now it is not you we are discussing uh because if you're watching this chances are you are not a representative from virginia if you were you'd have better things to do or maybe not maybe this is what the members of congress are doing with their free time uh which they seem to have a lot of no comment no modern politics here uh, John Brown was uh, a gentleman who was in Princeton, and then the British came just before the Battle of Princeton, uh, and he ran away, ends up going to University uh, uh, William and Mary, and then the British come, and he runs away again, and decides, to. I'm just going to go study law. Studies under Thomas Jefferson, who was governor when the British came and took uh, that particular university. Years go by, he gets some promotions, ends up going to the House of Representatives. He's an, an inaugural member of the United States House of Representatives on behalf of Virginia. And then the answer to our question, he is the one who recommended Kentucky. Uh, he nominates Kentucky to become a state. And when it is, he immediately resigns as a member of the House of Representatives to be a United States Senator from the great state of Kentucky. Low range coming in from Georgia. Welcome. And if you guys want to hit like while you're down there, that is the greatest thing in the whole world you could possibly do for me. Question number the fourth. We're still early on low range. You didn't miss much. Who was the only colonial governor, start the timer, to join the revolution and remain in charge after independence? By which I mean, uh, this person was colonial governor and then the revolution happened. And instead of siding with the king, like all the other governors, this person said, no, I think the Patriots are right. And the Patriots said, thanks for time. Thanks for coming along. You get to stay governor throughout the entirety of the war. This person would work very closely with George Washington. And by closely, I mean through letters and correspondence, uh, helping to supply and pay for the revolution itself because uh, this person having already been governor was really in the best position of all the other governors to continue helping as opposed to start helping he was able to continue helping throughout the war uh there is one other governor whose name is eluding me uh that technically was voted in as governor after the war starts but before independence in 1775 doesn't really count uh and yeah troy is on a hot fire streak right now uh dylan over here uh jonathan trump yes sir uh jonathan trouble was governor of connecticut uh he actually writes a really interesting letter to the governor uh to thomas gage who had become military dictator of boston aka massachusetts uh basically writing on behalf of the people of Connecticut saying, what are you doing? What are your plans over there? Uh, it seems like my legislature over here is ready to declare war on you. And I don't want to do that. Can you tell us what's up? And Gage writes back and says, send me men. 
and send me ammunition. And Trumbull makes a really interesting choice. He decides to know. He decides to stay and fight with the Patriots. A uh, really interesting read. Uh, I'm not sure what you're referencing about an interesting read, Troy. Uh, if you mean the letter itself, I believe I wrote this article like three, almost four years ago. Uh, but I I believe I have a link to it in my article. Um, I, I, don't rec I don't recall what else I said that you might want to read. Everything's fun, though. Question number five. And we're moving right along. Okay, this one was very hard for me to word, but let's go. Uh, the Seven Years War, Pontiac's War, Lord Dunmore's War, the Western Theater of the Revolutionary War, the Northwest Indian War, and the War of 1812 are sometimes in academia collectively referred to as one war. What are they all collectively called? Now, I'll pop up the timer here. I will say this is kind of an obscure reference, but it's an interesting term that I, I'm i thinking about making an entire video about. Have not really, I don't think I've ever actually said this phrase on the channel in my several years of doing it. But all of these wars put together were essentially, especially around the Great Lakes, as a series of engagements to grab control of the waterways known as the Great Lakes. Uh, these wars can all come together and be called one thing. Again, it's kind of an academic term. Um, we don't you see it very frequently in general books or things of, of that nature. Uh, but I, I'm interested to see if any of you have ever heard this phrase. Uh, you know, sorry to give you a tricky one halfway through, but I thought you know what. So this is how we learn. You know, you're not going to know every question when you come to about the day trivia. You're going to learn along the way, one would hope. And as I see no one, not even Troy, popping in answers here. The 60 Years is War, which, by the way, I understand years with an apostrophe is the way to do it because it's, I don't know, either way. <laughs> um, I've heard people reference the Seven Years is War the same way. Uh, the 60 Years is War, 1745 to 1815 is essentially the collection of engagements all the other wars above had battles around the Great Lakes. And if you look at the fight for the Great Lakes as one entity, uh, because they were fairly continuous engagements, mostly involving Native Americans, more even than the European co uh, col colonies, and then afterward the United States and Canada, aka Britain, uh, this is essentially... Uh, how you can reference all these. I, I found I came across this the other day, and I, I just found it a really interesting thing. So I figured I'd bring that up. With that out of the way, we're going to pop on over here. I am going to add some time to the clock. Because we... And I, I got rid of my clock. Okay, pop up my clock. What do I call the clock here? Timer games. Okay, timer games. We are going to put eight minutes on the clock, and you guys are going to start naming signers of the Declaration of Independence. And go. Just, all I need is the last name. If you want to give me a first name, especially the guys who have similar, a, by which I mean exactly the same last names, that's fine too. Now we're 20 seconds in, and I have not seen one name pop up here, and I know you guys can at least give me one name on the Declaration of Independence. No, I'm sorry, Lowell is a good guess. Uh, but Lowell uh, came to the Continental Congress later. I don't know if he actually signed any of the documents. He was there when they were debating the Treaty of Paris later on. Uh, so he, he was in the Continental Congress a little bit later in the game. Adams is definitely two correct answers. And alphabetically, they are the first two answers. J. Adams and S. Adams, by which I mean Johnny and Sammy. Gwinnett Button. Um... Uh, you should have put a comma there because it's button Gwinnett. So it would be Gwinnett comma button. Let's see. We got, uh, yes, Whipple is absolutely correct, Alex. William Whipple signed it. We talked about his brother, uh, Joseph, earlier. But William did sign the Declaration of Independence. Now, Lee is kind of a cop-out. F.L. Lee, Francis Lightfoot Lee, and R.H. Lee, Richard Henry Lee, brothers. The only two siblings uh, to sign the Declaration of Independence. Uh, Troy coming through with Sherman. Of course, Roger Sherman signed absolutely everything. Uh, Paca. Yes, Paca was a signatory, as was Morris. In fact, Morris is Robert Morris, R. Morris, and L. Morris, Lewis Morris, unrelated. 
Uh, yes, Tommy Jeff definitely signed the Declaration of Independence. He also wrote it, so that's definitely a good name. Uh, Stockton, you know, I forgot to put a question about my Stockton Boudinot discussion the other day. Although I did say Stockton's son in law signs the Declaration of Independence also, if you know that name. Confessional, welcome to the show. And Hart, I do believe, is a correct answer. Williams is one of them. Yes. William Williams, great name. Uh, Floyd from Long Island, mild stomping ground, is correct, and they're alphabetical, so I will find that. Huntington, also a town on Long Island, though this Huntington was from Connecticut. Samuel Huntington, a really important guy, as we discussed recently. With not white, George With is for sure on there. Middleton, yes, Middleton. Uh, Arthur Middleton replaced his father, Henry, who was not as radical because they wanted him to sign that dang thing. Gary, yes, as we discussed a few weeks back. Uh, Gary is one of the least appreciated American revolutionaries. Pen, 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 boom, boom, boom. Ellery, William Ellery from Rhode Island did sit there at the table and watch everyone else in the face before he signed himself. Thornton of New Hampshire. T. Oh, man. Uh, McKean. Yes, McKean is here. Lynch. Yes, sir. Also, another gentleman who replaced his father, though his father was in Philadelphia. He had a stroke and couldn't make it a few blocks to sign. Uh, Harrison. Uh, we, yes, Benjamin Harrison, who we discussed before. Uh, not William Henry Harrison. Uh, and Hayward. Hayward is here. There he is. And Hancock. Well, we better get Johnny Hands, shouldn't we? Uh, Audrey, I'm born and raised in Long Island. I live in Babylon. Oh, uh, Audrey, I grew up in Medford, just next door. Went to Patrick Medford High School, so not too far away. Franklin, William Floyd, uh, his house. You can go to his house. It's just uh, probably like 15, 20 minutes from you. Uh, I recommend when they open for the season. It's he's the only New York signer whose house still stands. Technically, he has two houses because he moved upstate later in life, but that's a private residence now. We can't go. Uh, Franklin, yes, Benjamin Franklin signed the Declaration of Independence, and we should get his name every single time. Climber, there he is. Uh, Chase, yes, sir. Chase, Samuel Chase, future Supreme Court Justice. And I've caught up to you. We have a whole bunch. Let's see. Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 30, 56. Can you guys see that blue thing bouncing around when I hover over it? Let me know if you see the blue thing bouncing around here. Uh, I never really considered. I figured you couldn't. That might be really frustrating. Payne. Yes. Uh, Robert, uh, blah, 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 blah. Robert Treat Payne. Great middle name. <laughs> middle name. Should have named my kid Treat. Uh, Payne with a P. Uh, like I said, there's a famous doctor who happens to be uh, Richard Stockton's son-in-law, who we did get, uh, who you can get. Caesar Rodney. Yes, Rodney, Commerce Caesar. And I went to the C. Uh, Rodney, where are you? Rod's a lot. There he is. Uh, there is a very famous doctor, a physician, who you will be not happy when you don't get. Uh, there's a TV show about a family in the woods, uh, from the 70s, uh, who have the same last name as this guy. Uh, confessional with Reed, yes, and you spelled it correctly. It is that Reed, not the other Reed. Stone, welcome to the party, Stone. Good one. We are, we're moving right along. We got two minutes. We got two minutes, and I'll try and give you more. Bartlett, yes. Uh, first name, uh, J Josiah, Josiah Bartlett. Uh, Lewis, I believe there is a Lewis. There he is. Francis Lewis made it to the show. Uh, there's a very famous family from New York that John Jay marries into. <laughs> um, uh... Lark, for sure. Yes. Witherspoon. I do believe so. So, Witherspoon was recorded by Stockton and his future son-in-law while in Scotland. Rutledge. Yes. I believe it's Thomas Rutledge. Replaced his brother John, who is more famous. Clark, we just got. Use is a correct answer. Uh, Hall is also a correct answer. Moving right along. We got a minute 15. 
Let's see how many more we can pack in in a minute 15. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, I can't. I'm trying to come up with hints. I'm not, I'm not being good at hints today. Morton, yes. Okay, Hopkins' son, yes. Now, what if you shortened Hopkinson just a little bit? Would also be a correct answer. Hooper, all the H's, as we discussed a few weeks ago, more people with the letter H beginning their last name than any other one. We have one left, and Hopkinson is very close to it. There it is, confessional Hopkins. There he is, got all the H's. Uh, one of the L's is missing, a famous family from New York. Um, oh, Betsy the Flag Sower. Uh, that's oh her her uncle that's that was too much that was too much of a hint confessional yes walton that is the 70s show reference i was trying to make before troy livingston there it is there's the famous family with an l confessional rush there's the famous doctor i was trying to get you guys to spit out uh livingston we just popped in confessional but yeah absolutely right you guys probably typed it at the same time feeds come through with different uh speeds for everyone of course three seconds Two seconds, one second, and time has elapsed. We got a lot of them. There's a lot of names on the screen. Uh, uh, you know what? I'm going to give you Wolcott. I'm going to assume you typed it in because I'm six seconds ahead of you. So I will include Wolcott. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. I think I miscounted, but let's see. We missed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I uh, No, I counted right. Seven out of 56 we missed. That's a great show. Also, let me know if you see this blue thing bouncing around or, or if I'm being uh, crazy here. Uh, if you guys want to hit like while we discuss the people we missed, Carter Braxton of the Braxton family of Virginia, not as famous today as they were at the time. They were really, really powerful in Virginia. Charles Carroll of Carrollton, the Carroll family of uh, Maryland were extremely uh, important to the revolution. They were Catholics and excluded from all politics until the Revolutionary War, where they finally got to step in, uh, and were minor characters, but important nonetheless in the development of, uh, freedom of religion in the United States. Uh, Nelson, Thomas Nelson, uh, Jr., who, uh, things are escaping me about his particular career, but I believe he was, uh, in, I think he was from York, I guess I have to look him up uh, because I believe he was part of the Yorktown Tea Party or the York Tea Party. There were many tea parties after the Boston Tea Party that were essentially symbols of support more than actual like destruction of property. And he was a leader in one of those. Uh, Ross, Betsy, Flag Sower. Uh, I thought that was too good a hint and you guys did not get it. <laughs> Betsy Ross is, I believe it's her like cousin or, or like once removed, something like that. Uh, George Ross, a porn leader of Pennsylvania. Uh, Smith of Pen of Pennsylvania, a uh, surveyor. Uh, uh, George Taylor, the indentured servant who signed the Declaration of Independence. Uh, Wilson. Uh, first name escaping me. Oh man, I'm embarrassed. I can't. I don't know why it's escaping me. I need sip of water. Uh, uh, Wilson. Why can I not think of anything about him? Where is he from? What does he do? I keep thinking of the name Tom Wilson because I'm a hockey fan. And if you. <laughs> If you watch anything about the NHL, you'll know why that's the name uh, bothering me. I'm sorry. Sometimes things elude me. I'm talking about a lot of people very rapidly. I hope you understand. Troy, I also envy Audrey for her ability to live so close to so many revolutionary sites. It is the one, one of the few things I miss about uh, living uh, so close to the shore. Uh, very few things I miss about living on Long Island. Sorry, Audrey. <laughs> Not my cup of tea. Um, though my parents live there, and that is something I miss. Um... All right, Troy. Well, I guess we're losing Troy for the second half. I, I never know what time you're eating dinner on the West Coast. I do know it's time to continue with our trivia questions. So question the next. George Washington created the Badge of Merit. What do we call this award today? George Washington's Badge of Merit. Fix the timer there. One minute. Uh, it was awarded for... Um, I don't want to say too much. <laughs> this one is very hard 
not to give away without giving hints. So I, what I will tell you is George Washington was commander in chief of the Continental Army. If you are watching this particular channel, you probably know that. I will take this opportunity to, to say, uh, yeah, you should hit like. There's more people here than like. So if you want to hit like, that would be fantastic. We'll get more people to come play trivia with us next week. And now that Troy, who has been our primary answerer through the first half of this discussion, uh, come on. Oh, uh, Audrey, I, I, I still go down all the time. Like I said, I grew up in Medford. So if you're from Babylon, you it's not the, the most famous town, but you're pretty close. <laughs> uh, I believe uh, my uh, I grew up going to a synagogue in uh, Babylon, actually. So now you know that about me. If you want to answer the question, uh, time's up. It is the Purple Heart. In fact, it was a Purple Heart. Uh, they only gave out three of them, I believe, during the Revolution. And then they disappeared for a while, but they were brought back uh, later. I think it was after the Civil War. I'm not sure when exactly it was brought back. But speaking of things that are not American Revolution, we're going to go to our not revolutionary history question today. Bob Ford was a coward. Who did he kill? Now, I'll give you a hint. This was Wild West times, so hopefully that helps a little tidbit. While he was um, he was out part of the Wild West, he was trying to collect a reward for the person he killed. Uh, I call him a coward because there was a movie about 12 years ago that was the blah, 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 and the coward. Robert Ford might have been the, in the title of the movie, but generally called Bob Ford, uh, may have worked with Governor Crittenden to, uh, instead of capture him, uh, take him alive, uh, and take him alive, he, he killed him instead. I guess there's not a lot of Wild West fans here. Truthfully, I'm not really either, but I was just watching about this a few hours ago, so I did it. Uh, yes, further east. I live further east, for sure. Uh, that being said, time has elapsed, and it was Jesse James. Uh, the coward Bob Ford killed Jesse James. And he is known as a coward because he, uh, when Jesse got up, Jesse was unarmed, which was unusual. And then he got up to dust a picture on the wall. And while his back was turned, that's when Bob Ford shot him in the back of the head, which is a coward's way out. I. Uh, he and his brother were charged and convicted and sentenced to hang for the murder, but were let off uh, by Governor Crittenden and uh, given a portion of the reward for Jesse James's murder. Not the entirety of it, just a portion of it. But what he did is he went on tour giving demonstrations, basically putting on a theatrical show of how he killed him. Uh, and the crowd would boo because they killed him like a coward. <laughs> Um, and he kept doing the tour, uh, which is fascinating. Anyway, back to the revolution. True or false, times were so desperate at Valley Forge that some soldiers had to stand guard in bare feet in the snow in Pennsylvania, which I assure you, it can get pretty cold in Pennsylvania, having spent portions of my childhood uh, at my grandfather's house there. Uh, I would skate on the frozen lake from time to time. I was just texting with my buddies. They were telling me I was not good at skating. And I said, I used to be until I didn't. My grandparents no longer lived at that particular location. And I could not go skating on the lake. <laughs> um, I, although, truthfully, a lot of that is me growing up and not being there. Also, you guys aren't telling me. I'm guessing you don't see this blue stuff popping up because no one has mentioned it. Being said, it's true or false question, and there's only nine seconds left. I know Troy left, and he's eager to answer, but, uh, you know, there's a bunch of you guys hanging out here. It's Give me a true or false. It's okay to be wrong. We're all going to learn the correct answer eventually. Uh, the answer is true. Not only did they stand guard and bare feet, many of them were forced to try and cook their shoes and eat that. It doesn't really work. Uh, they were desperate. It was a real starving time. Uh, despite the efforts, and I'll give a shout out to uh, Jan, one of uh, my supporters over on Patreon, by the way, if you want to support the channel. Uh, Jan uh, is a descendant of the Biddle family, and one of the Biddles, I think it was Charles, but there's a lot of Biddles, so don't quote me on Charles. Uh, I think it was Charles, was uh, in charge of getting food for the Continental Army uh, during the Forge Wars in New Jersey, and had a lot of difficulty in moving the, getting the food, finding any food, getting it from the farmers, and getting it across the snow-blocked pathways to Valley Forge in an effort to feed the Continental Army. 
Question the next. How many colonies were represented at the first Continental Congress? I'll remind you, the first Continental Congress took place over six weeks in Philadelphia. Uh, the second Continental Congress took place over 15 years throughout various cities in North America, uh, largely in Philadelphia at first, and then largely in New York for the last several years, but it did bounce around for various reasons from time to time. Uh, for example, while the Continental Army was at Valley Forge, it had left to go to first, uh, is it first York, then Lancaster, I think is the order that they moved. Was it Lancaster? Oh man, my memory's failing me today. I'm sorry guys, my my memory is failing me today. Uh, Sudo uh, uh, with nine, question mark. Not super sure. It is a great answer, especially because you're the only one giving me an answer on this particular question. Everyone seems to be uh, a little bit nervous this afternoon. Ever since Troy left, everyone's panicking. Uh, actually, the answer is 12. Uh, 12 of the 13 colonies were represented at that time. Though when I say 12 of 13, I guess I really mean 12 of, let's say, 15? Uh, of the original 13, Georgia was not represented. They were nervous to join. They would send one people late to the Second Continental Congress, even. Uh, East and West Florida was East and West Florida, two separate colonies at the time, technically British colonies, who were invited to the party and did not attend. Additionally, Canada. Canada was kind of one colony. It was French Canada, but it was Upper and Lower Canada. So technically two colonies and at the same time you have st john's and prince edward island uh, being settled for the first time could technically count as other colonies all were invited to the party not everyone came so for that six weeks nope just 12 and here we come to our final and perhaps our favorite question of the night what was the name of george washington's most useful horse during the revolutionary war washington as everyone at the time owned several horses throughout their life. Uh, horses were the primary means of transportation for most people other than foot. And uh, Washington did have several horses, but during the war itself, he had one horse he rode primarily. Was that horse's name Cincinnati, Rogers, William, or Nelson? Cincinnati. Did I spell Cincinnati right? Are there two T's? I think I spelled it right. Cincinnati, Rogers, William, Nelson. What do you think George Washington's favorite horse was? This is an extremely difficult question. Feel free to answer it wrong. There is zero pressure. We're having a good time here. I like to think. And as time runs down, everyone is a bit hesitant to offer a guess. I gave you some, I gave you some plausible answers here. One is right. Uh, and Sue coming through for sure. It was Nelson. Now, Washington had two horses during the war itself. Uh, a Nelson, a brown horse, and I don't know enough about horses to discuss breeds or anything of that nature. Nelson was a brown horse. You usually see Washington on a white horse in the pictures. Washington white horse. And I'm looking it up because the name of that particular steed escapes me. Blue skin. Okay, so Washington is most famously pictured riding his horse blue skin. White is a beautiful color on a horse, and that's why he had this horse, and that's why he rode blue skin, despite it being white. Uh, it's why that's the one in the pictures. That's the one he would ride for ceremonial purposes. That's the one he rode into New York City when they were victorious. But Nelson, uh, blue horse was, uh, blue skin was skittish. And when you are in a battle, and there are gunshots everywhere, and screaming, and horrifying things everywhere you look you don't want a skittish horse nelson was a brown horse who was not skittish and was renowned for being sturdy in face of battle and that's why nelson was the steed that washington was on uh from my understanding every single time he was engaged in an important battle uh so nelson I should probably uh, make Nelson founder of the day one day because Nelson played a gigantic role in the American Revolution, arguably a bigger role than any animal, maybe with the exception of Henry Dearborn's dogs when they had to eat them during the Maine wilderness trek to Quebec. But I guess that doesn't really count now, does it? So that will pretty much do it for today. I had a fantastic time. 
I hope you did too. I am going to get a haircut very soon, as soon as the winter storm is gone, I assure you. This is not, it's too much. I apologize. Thank you guys for coming. If you do want to support the channel, as always, I do have a Patreon page. I do a weekly live event uh, for the Patriots on Patreon. Some of that, the, some of the fun stuff I do clip and give to you guys. Uh, the family trees, I do those live over there that I've been putting out each week. Didn't have one this week. It was a little bit busy in my household with my spouse out of town and my children very much much in town with me uh and as i said earlier been a little under the weather for a few days so he slowed me down a little bit uh this weekend we're gonna do that live event on saturday because i have a niece and nephew having a birthday party i need to attend with that as always if you have any questions or comments uh recommendations anything of that nature please let me know in the comments i am always all ears and opened uh sue i'm feeling better i i you, you might not have been here at the beginning i have I have the sniffles. I've been fortunate enough to avoid getting the plague for the last two years, but uh, having not been sick for two years, uh, having a little runny nose and a scratchy throat, something that would never have stopped me from living my life before, has become, uh, we'll just say, easy to complain about. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, maybe I milked it a little bit. Maybe I milked it. What are you going to do? The, the, the thing is, we all got it a little bit. I got it one of my sons got it not very bad. Uh, I got it second, not very bad. My other kid was pretty sick for the first time in his whole life. And then my spouse was uh, unfortunately kind of taken aback by it. So that's that. I hope you, as I said, enjoyed this discussion about the American Revolution. It's trivia. It's, quite, you know, they're fun questions, but hopefully you learned a little bit from them. Some of them are a little bit difficult. I think I should probably put in a few more, more generic, easy questions along the way. Um, sometimes I get carried away finding my nerdy facts about the American Revolution. So uh, next week I'll try and put in some, uh, some curveballs. Is that how you, is that how it's said? Just throw some of them right down the middle for you. As always, my name is Jason. Uh, thank you so much. This is, I am your humble and obedient servant, and I'll be back with more founders all the time.